Hallelujah. Romans 8, picking it up at verse 9. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to or quicken your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you so much for a Savior in Jesus. Thank you so much for your love and, and Lord, your relentless commitment to us. Thank you so much for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for his ministry in us. For we cannot do your will, Father, without his power and his presence and his touch in our life. Father God, as we now come to glorify and hear you through your holy word, we bend our knee to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and we open our hearts to the promptings, the leadings, and the teaching of the Holy Spirit. I pray that I will just speak this word in integrity according to what you want, Father. It won't be me and it won't be just from my emotions, Lord. That I'll, I'll regard and I will, I will handle the word of God correctly in the name of Jesus. Lord, the, the message is important. This truth is important. And so open our eyes and open our hearts to it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn around and say, we need to let the quickener quicken. Would you please? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to welcome all of those across the United States that are watching via YouTube. Indeed, I, I want to also welcome all those around the world that is watching this service on YouTube as well. I want you to know we love you, we've been praying for you, and we believe the Lord Jesus Christ is going to touch you through this word. Amen. 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 Ever since Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, sin became the controlling force in the human condition. And with sin, see every part of the human condition, not just the people, but everything they did, everything they thought, everything they were a part of, sin became the dominating controlling force. And with it came death in all of its forms. Now this didn't surprise God. God has always had the plan. For the redemption that came by Christ's sacrifice and his resurrection made the way for God to resolve all our sin issues and to conquer every form of death. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now the Holy Bible reveals that there's many ways that death has affected our lives. A lot of times when you and I think about death, what we think about is just natural death or physical death. We, we will die. Outside the rapture, you and I are going to die. And that's all a part of, of the fall. That's a consequence of the fall. Now some of us think a little bit further and we also think about spiritual death. We, we understand the word of God that said because of sin that came through Adam and Eve, every, every person that was born thereafter, they were born with a dead spirit. As for you, you were dead, the Bible says, in your transgressions and your sins. Our spirit was dead at the very beginning, disconnected with God. And that's why we must be born again. Amen? Now, there's another kind of death that the Bible talks about. It's the kind of death you never want to experience. It's called eternal death, 
or the second death. You don't want to be a part of that. That's death in hell. Amen? Amen. Don't want to be there. Don't want to go there. Hell is real. Hell is hot. Hell is forever. That's what you need to know about hell. Amen. Yeah. But then there's also a fourth kind of death that the Bible talks about. It talks about the law of death or the principle of death. And you and I grapple with that law or that principle in our bodies and in our lives every day. The principle of death comes to sabotage us from doing God's will. It does. And it's seen, for instance, in our physical limitations. It's seen manifesting itself in our relational dysfunctions. It's seen manifesting itself in our emotional baggage or our misplaced priorities or our distorted obligations or our ongoing lack or our inabilities or contrary desires on and on and on and on. All of these arise to take the energy and the life out of our resolve to do God's will. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Have you ever, you know, saw something in the Word of God that you said, man, I need to do this. This is what God wants me to do. And, and, and you had every good intention, but something out of the blue, something out of left field comes around, and I mean just takes the air out of that resolve. Oh, you wanted to do God's will. You knew to do God's will is the right thing. But man, as soon as you start trying, it could be, you know, the family started fighting and, and then that, that's just, and you just got discouraged and you just didn't do it. Or, or maybe you saw something in the Word of God that you should be doing and, and, and quite frankly, you know, right now your emotional state, you just, you're just not in that place just to do that. You know, for instance, have any of you ever woke up in the morning, and you know the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. rejoice. Have you ever woke up in the morning and you were millions of miles away from rejoicing? Amen. And see, see how the principle of death works in that stuff to keep us from doing God's will. Now the good news is, God has provided a way for you and I to overcome that principle of death. Father God does not want you to be a failure. He didn't send Jesus to the cross and have Jesus rise again and give you the power of the Holy Spirit so that you could eke by in your Christian life. Father's heart for you is to go strong for Jesus. Amen. Amen. And God, knowing that this principle of death is just always attending and always working and always trying to stop us from doing things, he has a solution, and it's in the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. Now let me give you a little bit of context before we jump into our text. The last half of Romans chapter 7 speaks of the Christian's heart, how the Christian's heart to do God's will is always frustrated by what's called the law of sin and death. Paul was talking about, I want to do this, but sin is right there. Death is right there, keeping me from doing it. I don't want to do the other thing. Sin is right there. Death is right there. And that's what I wind up doing. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. But thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, he says. And that it opens up then beautifully the door to the, to the first half of Romans chapter 8 where, where God has made a way for the Christian to overcome the law of sin and to overcome the law of death through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now, as he speaks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, verses 9, 10, and 11 kind of sums up everything he was saying there in that, those first 11 verses. So let's pick it up at verse 9. In fact, I want you to look at 
the first half of, of, of verse 9. Read it with me, would you please? In Romans 8, verse 9, the first half. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. The indwelling Holy Spirit is given to us to supernaturally override the dominating power that our sin nature once had over us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, it's, it's not that we are no longer tempted. We are. And it's not that we can no longer make choices to actually sin. We can. But we are no longer under the spell of our sin nature where we couldn't help but do its bidding. You remember before you were saved, you had good intentions, you had and how your, that sin nature, you knew something was wrong, but man, if it started working, it's desire in you, you were going for it. And you couldn't stop yourself. In fact, the more you tried to stop yourself, the more you were planted inside of you, and you were going to do it. In fact, if you wonder if the sin nature still works in your body and in your life, do this. Go home and tell yourself all week long, I am not going to have a brownie. <laughs> Just say it. I am not going to have a brownie. You're going to think about brownies when you go to bed tonight. And then the next day, you know, now if I wouldn't have just said that, you wouldn't have even thought about a brownie all week long. But I said that, you go, I'm not going to have a brownie. I want a brownie. <laughs> then the next day, I got to have a brownie. You know, and it's just, and that's, how that, that's how that stuff works. It's like that. Come on. Yeah. You all know what I'm talking about? All right. Well, the good news is, is that the Holy Spirit, he can cast that brownie out of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit, he now controls, he now leads, and he now directs the hearts and the minds of all true Christians. The problem isn't who's inside of you, Christian. The real issue is, are you listening? Are you yielding? Are you obeying? Amen. Amen. Now the second part of verse 9, it goes on. And read it with me. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Christ because he's the conduit for Jesus to be in us and to relate to us personally. Our Lord Jesus Christ physically right now is reigning in heaven. He will come back again. But his personality, his mind, his heart, his spirit just comes through the person and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. So now you can know Jesus. You could relate to Jesus. You know, the Bible says you and I have the mind of Christ. Isn't it interesting that when the Bible speaks of us having the mind of Christ, it speaks of us having the Spirit of Christ living in us. Amen. Hallelujah. You know Jesus personally because the Holy Spirit is the conduit to the person and the presence and the work of Jesus in your life right now. Jesus isn't something that's just a concept. Jesus isn't just something who's, who, who lived 2,000 years ago and you believe the history. Jesus is alive and his presence lives inside of you by the impact and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if you do not have the presence of the Holy Spirit ministering the person of Jesus in you, it just simply means that you don't belong to Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit indwells all believers, no matter what stage or what condition their life is in. The Holy Spirit doesn't indwell in me more because I'm a pastor and you less because maybe you're away from God. It doesn't work that way. The Holy Spirit fully indwells in us. The issue, the difference may be, I'm giving more of myself to the Holy Spirit, right? 
There's more of me to give than you've got. Well, that's a different story. But you see how that works? You could be a new Christian. You could be a weak Christian. You could be a struggling Christian. I want you to start thanking God because you have everything you need dwelling inside of you. You have everything you need to make it. You have everything you need to do the will of God. You have everything you need to please God. You have everything you need by the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so then he goes into this 10th verse, and it's kind of confusing to some of us. Read it with me. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Now, the life of Christ abiding in us through the Holy Spirit makes our once dead and disconnected spirit alive again and connected to Father God by him. Amen? And because we believe in Jesus, the Bible says, his righteousness, his accomplishments, his holiness, who he is before the God, his pleasure before, the God, before God Almighty is now imputed on us because we're trusting him. But the Bible says, but our body is still dead because of sin. And we're going, wait a minute. I thought Jesus Christ conquered sin, paid for sin on the cross. Be sure to know he did. I thought Jesus conquered death in his resurrection. Be sure to know he did. But understand the process of redemption. Now, when you've come to the Lord, you were marked as his, and everything is marked for redemption. Amen? Amen? But you begin, your spirit immediately, the moment you asked Jesus into your life, you repented of your sin, and you, you put your faith in him as Lord and Savior, immediately your dead spirit is redeemed and alive. And as we continue to walk with them, our mind, will, and emotions, our souls, is in this process of redemption. Amen. It's being renewed day by day. Amen? Amen? But our body, though marked with him, the Holy Spirit is here. We belong to Jesus. This body belongs to him. It will not realize its full redemption until we're resurrected. And then that which was sown in dishonor will be raised, hallelujah, in glory. Until then, the principle or the law of sin continues to work in it, and the body itself, though we love Jesus and though we are a spirit that has a soul, contained by a physical body, the body in and of itself does not have any spiritual resources of itself to fill God, to hear God, to connect with God. We need help. Amen. That's why that law of sin, that principle of, of, of death, I mean, can work its way in us and sabotage us for doing the will of God. Any of you ever was doing something the Lord had called you to do and you got sick? And it just kind of just shipwrecked it all? Yeah. It happens. It happens. What's God's solution? Well, you know what God's solution is. It's the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. My spirit doesn't need to be quickened. My soul is being renewed by the word of God day by day Amen. and his presence. But this thing, my flesh, my body, it needs the quickening power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the principle of death so I can do God's will. And that's what God gives us. Read verse 11 with me, would you? And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to or quicken your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. 
first of all, I want you to notice the personal, um, the pronouns. Him, he, and his. Who is this talking about? Father God. Okay, let's, let's, uh, uh, let's read this again. And where you see he, him, or his, we'll say Father God and see if that fits. Okay? And if the spirit of Father God who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, Father God who raised Christ from the dead will give life to or quicken your mortal bodies through Father God's Spirit who lives in you. It works. Yeah. See that? It works. It's Father God. Now God's answer for our mortal bodies plagued by the principle of death is the Holy Spirit who quickens them with supernatural life to override the effects of death. Yes, you can do the will of God. Amen. Oh yes, you can by the power, the quickening power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, you notice that this quickening power is likened to Father God raising Jesus from the dead. This is important because it shows us two very important ways that the Holy Spirit helps you and quickens you in your life. Just as when Jesus' physical body was laid in the tomb and had no physical life of its own to draw from, right? There was nothing in Jesus' physical body when he died and he was laid in that tomb. There was nothing in that body. There was no life. No, in fact, how much of Jesus' blood was shed? Nothing. No life. That physical body could not be made alive again. If you sent the EMS people in there and Jesus' physical body is in there and they got the paddles out like that and then they try to press his heart and try to blow in his mouth, that physical body was dead. It wouldn't have made it alive. But it became alive by the power of God. So in the same way, we who have no spiritual energy in our natural selves to tap into, in the same way, we're quickened by the Holy Spirit to do God's will. Why, now, why, why is that important? Because when you and I are confronted with something that God would call us to do, let's, let's think about just out loud, and, and you just some of the hard stuff that God calls us to do that your body just sometimes don't want to do. Say, say a few of those things. What would they be? Forgiveness. What did you say? E exercise. <laughs> Amen. Physical exercise is good, but godly you know, training and godliness is eternal. Okay, what else? To love, one another. to love one another. Sometimes that's just tough. What else? Pray. To pray. Get up and pray. Just to pray. To remember to pray. By the way, you know, I, I've, I've been praying about our church's prayer life. Not your individual, but even us as a church. Amen. Hallelujah. We're asking God to do a lot of things. It ain't going to happen if we're not praying. Amen. 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 Okay, those are just a few things. Having the joy of the Lord. Um, Robert, in the first service, uh, Lutz, Robert Lutz says, be thankful always. Try that. We're confronted with these things and something here in my life that will just, you know, driving the kids to school and, uh, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to have the joy of the Lord or I'm just going to give God thanks. And, and the kids on the way to school, the kids goes, oh, by the way, mom, you're supposed to sign this release and I'm supposed to give them $20 and, and uh, I'm supposed to have some lunch because I'm supposed to go to, you know. <laughs> Any of you moms know what I'm talking about? Last minute, on the way, they're there. You ain't thinking about, oh, hallelujah, I'm just going to give God thanks for this. 
I'm just going to rejoice in the Lord right now. And again, I say rejoice. That principle of death will work in that situation and will zap your resolve to live the way God calls you to live. So that's when you need to say, you know what? I don't have it in me right now. I, I just want to just drop my kids off and leave them there and I don't care where. <laughs> And then what you do is you just admit it. But then don't forget it. Admit you don't have it. But then say, but you have the quickening power. I need right now, quicken me, Holy Spirit. Because I want to do the will of God. I want to thank God. And you start thanking God and your kids are going, why are you thanking God, Mom? Why are you so happy? Because this is a teaching moment and you ain't going to school. You ain't going no place. You're going home and I'm putting you to work all day long. You should have told me before that. <laughs> and now I'm rejoicing too. Right, right. You know, so, uh, but the, the whole quickening, the whole quickening power of the Holy Spirit, it's, it, he's for us. Now, again, again, this quickening power is, is likened to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In that Jesus' body not only could, could be alive by itself, neither could it sustain life by itself. It was way too damaged. The blood was gone. So how in the world can Jesus' physical body be alive to this very day, 2,000 years, and by the way, forever and ever and ever, amen? How can that happen? Never underestimate the power of God. Amen. He is alive by the power of God. He is. And so in the very same way, you know, you're doing the will of God. You're doing something. God called you to a ministry, Sunday school. He called you to witness to your neighbors. He called you to help someplace. And, and you're doing it. And all of a sudden this happens or that happens. Knocks the slats right out of you. Everything gets all messed up. And you just don't have it anymore. You just can't keep it going anymore. Some of you feel this way because you're in a difficult marriage and you just you don't know how you're going to stay at it anymore. Let me tell you, the quickening power of the Holy Spirit will give you the sustaining power you need to do the will of God until Jesus comes back. You admit it. You admit the fact that, Lord, it's just all run out of me and I just don't know how I'm going to live with that old man. I just don't know if I've got it no more. You admit it, but you don't walk away from it. You step out in faith and say, oh, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to allow your quickening power, Holy Spirit. I'm going to yield to your quickening power and I'm going to keep loving and I'm going to keep serving and I'm going to keep going and, and you just start stepping out. Now, don't sit around and go, well, I'm going to start loving and serving as soon as I feel a zap from the Lord. <laughs> no zap yet. Don't do that. He might zap you and not in a good way. Bzz, you know, no, it's not going to happen that way. We always step out in faith because his word is true. And when you step out in faith, you find that quickening power. Amen. You find it already working in you. You find it already releasing you. Yes, you can do the will of God. When am I finished doing the will of God? When you... Never. When you die, it just means you're doing the will of God in a different location. Amen. You will always be doing the will of God. No wonder why the Holy Spirit dwells in us forever. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Just means you graduate it from this place to the next place. One last thing I want you to notice. It was there in verse 9, the first part of verse 9. And it's here in this verse 11. In verse 9, it, it tells us that the Spirit lives in us. You're not controlled by your sinful nature if the Spirit of God lives in you. And then do you notice here there's the quickening power of, the Holy Spirit, of, of God through the Holy Spirit as He lives in you. How many of you know there's a difference between loitering in a place and living in a place? 
Some of us have a feeling like the Holy Spirit's in our lives to loiter. Or we just put them in a little closet and when we're ready for them, because we're ready for a mountaintop experience or we're really dry, we need refreshing from him, we'll let them out. That word lives there, by the way, is this active, ongoing tense that he's abiding in you. He's living with you. Have you ever had anybody in your house, maybe they came to visit or something, and they never participated in the family. They were just there. Ate your stuff, you know, did this, did that, never helped, never talked, never was involved, never anything. And they were, they weren't living. They weren't living. There was no relationship there. They were loitering. They were taking advantage of that's what they were doing. Well, the Holy Spirit, his ministry in our lives is only experienced as we allow his presence to have active residence. Amen. You know, the Word of God tells us the last verse of the last chapter of, of, of 2 Corinthians. That we're to commune, we're to fellowship with the Holy Spirit tells us the same thing in, in uh, Philippians chapter 2. I want to say verses either 3 or 4. We're to commune with the Holy Spirit. That means we're to pay attention to Him. We're to talk to Him. We're to listen to Him. We're to yield to Him. We're to allow Him. Understand that God does nothing in our lives out of our out of our some sort of religious obligation type thing. It, does, it doesn't work. Have you noticed that God does everything in our lives out of this personal relationship? Jesus, when he was praying uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, this is life. This is eternal life. That they may know you the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Amen. Now get this, that word no, personal relationship experience. This is eternal life, to have this personal relationship with you, Father God, with me, and also with the Holy Spirit. Doing the will of God it's not, a, it's not an issue if, of can I. God already answered that for you. Yes, you can. Doing the will of God, the real issue is, well, I. Can I is already dealt with. Any obstacle, any, anything that you would think the devil would throw in front of you, it's taken care of. You can. Oh, yes, you can. Amen. But the real problem is, is will I? Will I? Well, I bow my knee to the Word of God while I open my heart to the leading and prompting of the Holy Spirit. Will I trust God in this nowhere job of mine? I'm not saying mine is, but I'm just saying in this nowhere job of mine who don't appreciate me, no more advances, I can't hardly make, I don't even know how I'm going to retire. And God is not doing anything to change that. You know, I don't know. You know, I just don't know if I could do the will of God. Oh, yes, you can. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of will you. Will you surrender to his purposes for you on that job? I just don't know if I can exist anymore and do the will of God in this loveless marriage. Oh, no, no, you could do the will of God. That's not the issue. The issue is, well, you do God's will. Well, you love. Well, you serve. Well, you continue on. I want to tell him I will. And then I want to fellowship with him and let his quickening power work his marvelous work in me. Amen. Over and over and over again till I get to heaven. And then, hallelujah, he'll keep working with me, but I won't need his quickening power in my mortal body anymore.
Hallelujah. Maybe until that last quickening. There's going to be one more quickening power after you die. And that's when Jesus comes back. And he'll say, get up! And you'll go, rise up laughing. Wake up singing. Enter in praising God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's bow our hearts before him, shall we? A lot of kingdom business done today. and This is so important. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, something in you, in your heart of heart, your, your spirit, you, something paid attention when I said hell is real, hell is hot, hell is forever. And you realize you're a sinner and you're on your way to hell. But God doesn't want you. He loves you. He doesn't want you to go there. He loves you. He's given Jesus Christ as his gift to you. To, he took your sins on the cross and Jesus was punished for your sins. He died and he rose again so that Jesus could live his righteous life in you. But you have to receive this free gift of salvation on God's terms. You have to be willing to say, no, I don't want to live my sinful life anymore. If God, you say it's wrong, I'm trusting you to help me not go in that direction. I, I'm going to turn my back on the sinful life and I'm going to start living and following you. If you're willing to do that and then you're willing to put your full trust in Jesus as Savior. You put your full trust, your faith in Jesus as the Lord, the boss of your life. And you put your full trust in everything Jesus says for us to do. Knowing he's going to help us and he's going to give us the Holy Spirit to obey. If you're willing to do that this morning and God's talking to you, would you just raise your hand right now and just look up and... I want to pray with you. Okay. Looking, looking, looking. Okay. And if those of you who are watching on YouTube, if God has so impressed you, and he's actually the one who's drew you to watch this today, your praying won't make salvation happen. Jesus make salvation happen. But your praying is how you begin your faith relationship in Him. And so pray this prayer. Say, Father God, thank you for your gift of salvation. I choose to this day to turn from my sinful ways and to follow you. And right now, by your grace, I put my faith in Jesus as the one who died for me and rose again, who paid the price of, of, for my sin. I put my faith in Jesus, who's now the boss over me, what he says goes. And I put my faith in Jesus, who will lead me to obey your holy word. Thank you for your salvation. We love you. And then as you're praying, brothers and sisters, has there been something that the principle of death has worked in your life and so you said, you can't do this anymore, but God didn't say, stop it? Would you ask him to forgive you? And would you invite the quickening power of the Holy Spirit to begin working its work in you right now in Jesus' name.